Updated with a softer feel for 2023, this is the Yonex V-Core 95. This user-friendly mid-size racket gets some slight tweaks. Speedy yet stable, Yonex has re-engineered the frame's technology, redesigning the shaft and making the beams face thinner, yet widening the surface area of the upper hoop, resulting in a spin-friendly hitting experience. With a lower stiffness rating and better ball feedback, experienced players will appreciate the newfound precision and flex. I'll start out this play test by mentioning that my favorite of the previous V cores was that SV model. So it's clear that I like stiffer frames and this one was noticeably softer and plusher from the very first hit. I know a lot of players love that feel, but for someone that likes something that feels more like a board, I struggled a little bit to feel connected to the string bed, but I will note there's definite dwell time that again, I know a bunch of players and the other play testers really loved. With that being said, I found that this racket did pair well with my game and I was playing good tennis. So it just, the feel was something that I don't prefer and definitely would gravitate more towards a E-Zone racket. I was able to hit this side by side with the V-Core 98. I preferred that 98 just because it's got a little bit of a more forgiving head size and I felt like it might be a tiny bit stiffer, but all in all, I know this V-Core 95 is gonna be well received by a ton of players out there. Really excited to be here today to talk about the new update for Yonex's V-Core 95. I will say I'm going to describe this overall as little things make a big difference for a lot of players, including myself. There hasn't been a big changes. If you look at it on paper, there's not a big change. It's got a swing weight slightly over instead of under 320. So for me, I kind of stumbled with the previous versions of the 95 where this one really clicked with my game. I typically have been gravitating towards a head boom pro, which is another 310 gram frame, pretty similar. So I had a really simple transition uh, as Michelle mentioned and the other play testers probably will as well. The 1620 pattern made it really easy to generate spin, top spin or slice, yet still control shot depth, very predictable. Um, and I will underscore again what Michelle mentioned is just very easy to get the ball moving the way you want, where you want. I just really didn't have any issues at all. One of my favorite Yonex rackets and Yonex has made plenty of them that I really enjoy a lot, but this one would be a really easy switch for me to go to. It's just from any part of the court, very versatile, uh, very predictable frame overall. Love the play test. For this review, I'm actually gonna start out with a couple of downsides since you guys are always saying we're too positive on these reviews. A couple things that stood out to me right away. I'm not a hu I'm not in love with the cosmetic. I like it. It's red like previous ones, but just maybe wasn't a huge fan of the addition of the black and the blue. Um, and then other than that, the head shape was a little bit weird for me at first. Um, really wide up at the top, so it just kind of looked a little different than your typical head shape. But getting past all that, um, the more I hit with it, the more I really started to fall in love with it, kind of like previous versions of the V-Core 95, which I was a big fan of. Definitely noticed uh, a softer feel here, so really comfortable, uh, really plush on the arm, very much appreciated, especially from the baseline. I really like that soft feel. And the biggest thing was the spacing of the strings. It is a 1620, but it's really spaced like most 1619, so you get that really easy lift launch angle on the ground strokes and also really easy spin on the kick serve, top spin serve and whatnot. So just makes this 95, this smaller head, play bigger than it is and also just very spin friendly. So if I had to knock it, I would probably just increase the swing weight up, get the, the head weight up a little bit more for plow through, for put away power. But this is definitely a racket that I could continue to play with and be very happy with. Out of all the new V cores, the 95 was my favorite to hit. I've always kind of trended towards mid rackets when I'm just enjoying my tennis and looking for that really sweet feel when I hit the ball. And this one definitely has it. I find it a softer, plusher feeling racket than previous V cores. And I also thought it was really forgiving. For a 95, this is a really, really forgiving racket. And if you know, you've know you trained it away from smaller head sizes, I think this one could tempt you back because it is such an easy racket to use despite being only an, uh, sort of what we call a mid now in modern terms. I got a lot of spin on my shots out of this one. Nice high launch angles, hitting some good depth and pace and getting that top spin to roll the ball inside the lines. And when I was looking to tee off my one-handed backhand, this is probably one of my favorite rackets to do it with. It comes through super quickly and I feel like I can really crush the ball with that shot more so than I can with other rackets I hit. At net, ton of feel of control too, so my kind of jam up there. And then on serve, it's got just enough pop to help me get the job done. Like Troy, I'd probably weight this one up a little bit 
Um, I'd probably throw a leather grip on it, add a little bit of weight to the hoop, and then see how it played like that. But uh, in stock form, really fun play test. For the review today, we have these V-Core 95s strung up with Yonex's Polytor Strike and Polytor Drive, both at 52 pounds. For more information on this racket or anything else tennis related, be sure to head to Tennis Warehouse, Tennis Warehouse Europe, or Tennis Over.